I want you to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. All right, folks, an update uh, on the story out of Los Angeles dealing with Democratic donor Ed Buck, a second black man found dead in his apartment in 18 months. Uh, of course, we've been covering this story. Uh, the man who was found dead was Timothy Dean. He's 55 years old. He worked at Saks Fifth Avenue in Beverly Hills. Now, investigators are looking into this second death uh, under 18 months in Buck's home. Uh, earlier today, I sat down with uh, Dr. Cleo Monago, uh, who works with, uh, actually the founder of Black Men's Exchange, uh, a same, same gender loving organization. Uh, and he said, look, this is very familiar to what happens in Los Angeles between white men and black men who are gay. So, Cleo, all of a sudden, national media is now paying attention to the Ed Buck story. Uh, we were focused on it uh, 18 months ago. Uh, and you spent a lot of time in Los Angeles. Just talk about just, just is this the norm, how crazy this is? Just, just your thoughts about this. Well, first of all, I think you may know by now that there's a third gentleman who survived Ed Buck and got away, a brother named J Jermaine Gatson, I think his name was, who um, Ed Buck had shipped in from Minnesota, who actually has pictures of him um, being involved with this man in the drug paraphernalia. The reason I raise that is because the attorney for Buck said something about his excuse was that, well, people, I have people in my life, some of them do drugs, and they come to my home when they have problems. And what's going on is um, he's creating a new narrative. So what happened the first time, which meant nothing in response to a death, is going to happen again. And I hope people are real clear about the contradictions here because, first of all, people who are just your friends don't typically come to the house at 1 o'clock a.m. for anything. And the, Germ the first man, Jamel, was found nude and dead in his home. So I really want to make it real clear that there's disregard for these black men's lives going on and this white man is preparing himself to get away with it again, and that there's a predatory problem in the white gay community of, of fetishizing and being predators on, on black men, which has been going since I was a kid. There's major intersections in this country where working class, <clears throat> unemployed uh, men, and some of these men have been to prison and have learned to have engaged with other men based on the prison experience, who can't get a job, who need a fix, who are, who are subject to people like Buck. My biggest concern is that he doesn't get away with it. And that the um, tendency to disregard black life as if, it's, if, if a person dies, it doesn't matter. And I want to reiterate that, again, people, that this man was at home. There's, there's young people who have been involved with him who have said he's injected drugs in them. And that he is not an innocent bystander. He is um, part of a situation that's led to the death of a number of black men or the drug addiction of a number of, a, a number of black men, and that needs to be addressed. And what was very interesting is that a lot of people have been highly critical of the Los Angeles LGBT Center. Uh, for their statement. Uh, they issued a statement. They said, while much is still to be learned, it appears this tragedy is linked to substance use. Uh, and then LGBT people and other marginalized groups are at elevated risk for impacts that result from the current epidemic uses of opioids, methamphetamine, and other dangerous drugs. And that was one of the things that, uh, and some have taken offense to that by saying, wait a minute, don't try to turn this thing all of a sudden into a substance abuse issue. I agree. Um, the people died in his home. He didn't die in his home. He clearly takes meth as well. So to make it a drug addiction issue, again, is to divert from the fact that this man has a pattern of of alluring black men, flying them in. He flew Jermaine, whatever his last name, I think his name is, from Minneapolis. And I'm here to tell you, this is, a, this is conjecture, but I imagine that this man has many men who he's done this with. One of the problems of the black community is a lot of same gender loving people don't feel safe or comfortable or like they can live their lives without some kind of combat or challenge, so they don't say what, go what goes on with them. It's kind of like the child that's been abused in the home who feels like they can't tell anybody because they, because they might be victimized for even saying anything. There's a lot of same gender loving bisexual black men and black men in the vi who are involved in survival sex, who are not necessarily homosexual, but are involved in survival sex, if you know what I mean, who have been- Not for the person at home, what's okay. survival sex? Survival sex is someone who's broke, or dealing with a major addiction where they want to get their fix one way or the other. 
So they'll do anything to get it. Got it. And people like Buck and others prey on these kind of people and look for them because they see them as vulnerable and people who are willing to do whatever they want them to do. Now you have Congressman Ted Lieu of California who is returning the $18,500 that came from Ed Buck. Uh, Jasmine Koenig and others have been really pushing hard saying, look, return this guy's money. And many Democrats were ignoring that call. Yeah, well, I'm glad Jasmine's doing what she's doing. But I'm going to go back to things you've heard me say before. These people are involved in CYA activity because of exposure. As you mentioned earlier, you've been covering this issue when the first brother, they the first known brother, because I think there were others. Right. But you've been covering this for over almost two years. When the first time it happens, no one said anything. The major, mainstream media didn't say anything. Now they're giving money and all this other kind of stuff in terms of making it look like they don't buy into this because they don't want to look bad. But the bottom line is that if it wasn't for public pressure, including the work that you've done and, and Jasmine uh, as well, these brothers would have been dead and buried and we would have went on with, with, with our lives. But the black community needs to look at the fact that we have black people who are sensual loving, bisexual, et cetera, who are vulnerable to these things, who are at risk because for, as far as them, they're concerned, they don't have a community to back them. Right. And that they don't have their own people to back them also puts them at risk for Ed Buck. So I want to take, take the Buck, excuse me, take the issue off of Ed in terms of it being all his circumstance he didn't create. He's just opportunizing off of a circumstance that black people will not attend to. All right. Cleveland Nago, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Sure. I want to go real quick to our panel here. I mean, this is, again, without public pressure, this doesn't happen. And otherwise, these black men, their deaths would be absolutely ignored. They're disposable. I mean, clearly, that's what's going on here. And you have a wealthy white donor. Granted, he's donating to the left, but a wealthy white donor who is able to get, get away with this, get away with this, at least as far as we were able to discern, two deaths, two unexplained deaths, high-profile deaths in his home, and no police investigation, no major calls for action. Uh, it's, it's just another example of how men, black men, are seen as disposable and how white privilege, especially if it's got money backing it, is very, very powerful and can, can, can make these guys almost like they didn't exist. They just kind of vanish and disappear. Ain't natural for two people to die in your house in 18 months. Absolutely. Clearly, and that alone, that alone would warrant any kind of an investigation from almost any, if you had somebody, if I had somebody die in our home, not once, even once would have been enough to warrant a significant investigation, twice, and, it, and nobody really raises an eyebrow, and he's allowed to explain that this really had nothing to do with me, these guys were hooked on drugs, I don't know what happened, doesn't hold water. Well, Joe, like you said, I mean, wealth, privilege, there is a level beyond which most of us are not allowed to question or interrogate. This has become a, an issue now, as Cleo said, Dr. Monaco said, because, you know, it, it's, it's been pushed out of this venue and others. But at the end of the day, what happens when you have so much money and so much privilege, you can do whatever you want, whether it be Donald Trump, whether it be Buck, whether it be, you name it, Kavanaugh and, and parties and underage girls. If you've got the connections and the privilege and the wealth, this country sends the message that, you know, the rules don't apply to you the same. Well, other people don't matter. The, That's, right. That's the money, right. The money certainly has a lot to do with it, especially when it's given to, um, in a political context. Yes. It, it kind of reminds me also of the case with Jeffrey Epstein, too, um, in Florida. Mm -hmm. And that involved um, young white women, but it was a similar situation of marginalized um, people being taken advantage of and someone with political connections and money just completely treating them as though they have no agency. And got so. a sweetheart deal yeah. from the U.S. Attorney's yeah. Office. Yeah, well, let's hope that in this case it's actually the person is held accountable buck because we don't want to see anything you want to support roller march unfiltered be sure to join our bring the funk fan club every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as roller martin unfiltered support the roller martin unfiltered daily digital show by going to roller martin unfiltered.com our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year you can make this possible roller martin unfiltered.com Oh!